that I'm in my Prima red, or maybe it's the, I don't know, Norway red, but... I can tell you're awake too early, because I'd call it a Danish red rather than a Norwegian red, personally, but that's just me. <laughs> that's okay. We'll take the Prima red. I'm so sorry. I was rehearsing that line in the shower. <laughs> I'm so... <laughs> it's way too early for me. Hello and welcome to the Feeder Series podcast. The Formula 2 season is properly underway and with a stellar Saudi Arabian weekend producing two thrilling races and we've got two new race winners as well. I'm your host Jim Kimberley and I'm delighted to say that one of those visitors to the top step of the podium is joining us on the podcast this week. Now in his second F2 season, he's rejoined the team that powered him to a dominant 2019 Formula Regional Championship and an impressive rookie 2020 F3 campaign. That partnership with Prema has now made him a Formula 2 feature race winner. Welcome back to the podcast, Frederick Vesti. How are you today? No better way to celebrate a first win than a long haul flight and a podcast appearance, I'm guessing. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I'm very good. Obviously, my I'm in Melbourne now preparing for the weekend for the race weekend in, in yeah, two weeks' time. Out here a bit early. Uh, but obviously, the, a long flight like that is always a bit nicer with a race win. It's going to be so much better with a trophy. What happens to the trophy, by the way, just out of curiosity? Did Prebe just send that back to Italy or did you travel with it on hand, hand luggage? I lost it somewhere at the team. I, I didn't actually hear. I, I couldn't bring it. So I, I'm sure they, they will they will sort out that, sort that out. Well, a long time in Australia. I'm sure every kilo of luggage is much, much needed. And joining us in perfect timing, may I say, as well. And a name I'm happy to say is back onto the podcast is a name that you all know and love, Tyler Foster. You bravely set an early alarm for the podcast to once again disturb your sleep schedule. All worth it, though, to speak to Mr. Vesti? Of course, of course. Um, yeah, we're with Vesti Besti. I'm trying to think of all the all the nicknames that we've got for him, but I'm um, in my Prima Red, or maybe it's the I don't know Norway Red. But yeah, we're we're all fans of Vesti today. After after that Sunday drive, I think it's safe to say that I can tell you're awake too early because I'd call it a Danish Red rather than a Norwegian Red, personally. But that's just me. <laughs> that's okay. We'll take the Prima Red. I'm so sorry. I was rehearsing that line in the shower. <laughs> I'm so. It's way too early for me. It's way too early. I mean, I'll tell you what, I, I know a lot of people that stand there and, or sit there and watch, you know, F1, F2 and think to themselves, oh, you know, with a bit of more funding, I could have made it, I could have made it. I'll tell you what, there's no way in how I'd be able to get up this early and do, you know, do racing as a junior career. So, yeah, fair enough for you, for you, for you travelling around the world and doing it. And um, but anyway, yeah, good to be back and, and good to good to see Fred with us as well. As ever, if you enjoy the podcast, please like, comment and subscribe if you're watching on YouTube. And if you're listening on Spotify, Apple Podcasts or another podcast platform, you can leave a rating or review instead. We're sitting pretty with five stars on Apple and 4.9 on Spotify. Thank you to everybody who's rated us. And if you are listening on Spotify or watching on YouTube, take part in our new podcast polls. In honour of today's guest, we're going to ask you where you think Fred will finish in the F2 standings at the end of the season. Head over to our YouTube channel or look below on Spotify to cast your vote. And while you're there, if you haven't already rated us or subscribed, please take the 10 seconds to do so. It really does help us out. Let's go and talk about Saudi Arabia. Um, but before we really get stuck into it, last time we had you on was a year ago, more or less. And then it was your first points finish in F2 after Imola feature race. This time... In the feature race, you've won one now, your first feature race win in F2. So how do you reflect on the, the last 12 months? Yeah, well, there's been a lot of development. Uh, of course, the, the change to Prema is, is quite a big one. Uh, good results last year, uh, quite strong in quality over the summer. Uh, didn't get a feature race win, which I was fighting so hard for. Um, yeah, got the chance to go with Prema. I was quite sure that that was the, the right move for me. Uh, no doubt, ART is a very strong team, but I think Prema can give me the last bit that I need uh, in order to win. And um, and already winning the feature race in the second race weekend with Prema is uh, it's a very good achievement and something we can really take a big boost into the season. 
Yeah, well, I'm just hoping to hear more about the ART side of things, but I can understand why with everything that's happened this last weekend being so fresh in the mind that you want to talk about your Sunday drive and you had two F2 newbies spinning out of the way, not wanting to win. You as a second year driver is like, well, I'll take the win if you guys aren't going to. And it was a great battle for the lead to watch in the feature race, especially your move on your teammate with a very opportunistic um, drive out of turn two, I think it was, on the run down to turn four. Brilliant overtaking. How was everything from the cockpit? Yeah, honestly, it was it was a crazy race. Uh, racing on a street circuit like that, where it's actually quite easy to overtake, is uh, is quite eventful, let's say. Uh, if you got pace, it's it's possible to overtake. And uh, and that I think both of the F2 races, uh, both Saturday and Sunday, showed that. Um, that it provides great racing. Um, for me, the race was, it was the kind of race that just became better and better and better. Um, I think our car was was also suitable for a longer race like the feature race where it just got really well. Uh, the tires was was really in a good window and uh, and I could really start smelling the, the victory after the good pit stop we had and, and I got a bit closer. They started to fight uh, ahead of me, uh, Behrman and, and Martins. And um, and yeah, we just I, I took it step by step, lap by lap. Um, and when I got closer to Victor, of course, he made that uh, mistake in T4. To be fair to him, it is a very difficult corner, and I think most of us drivers were actually struggling to to keep it on the track there because it is it is a risky place. It's a blind corner, and you just take so much speed through the corner. Um, but yeah, eleven laps in the lead, and then I finally got my first feature race win. Oh, so happy for you. I'm sure the smell you could smell was the smell of Victor Martin's uh, tyres screeching out in pain as well, which turned into victory for you. But Tyler, I got the impression, maybe I'm wrong, that even if Victor didn't spin, that Frederick had enough pace, I think, to have won the race anyway. What do you think? Well, firstly, I'll apologise to our Danish viewers. Um... <laughs> Stewing over that one. <laughs> yeah, secondly, I'll say... Um... The thing is, it's really difficult to call that sort of thing. I'm sure Fred got asked it loads after the race. Um, uh, I Because it's Mother's Day on Sunday, or it was Mother's Day in the UK on Sunday, I wasn't able to be in the press conference, so I wasn't able to ask Fred the questions that I usually would ask. Um, but I guess I'll ask it to him now. So, Fred, you said after the race that you felt that you had the pace to win it anyway. Um, but considering that you know you said as you said that you had 11 laps left to to run after you had were in the lead do you think that considering how the tires were and everything that um you would have been able to pass both of them on track if if neither of them had made the mistake yeah i mean i got past ollie uh, fan square they were obviously fighting uh, together but then obviously i got past victor but you know i was there putting pressure on him for five laps having the drs open um, and and with the knowledge I have now, the car only got better throughout the race. Um, it's impossible to predict the race that didn't happen. Um, but yeah, at the end of the day, we had a very strong car. We showed that with fastest laps a couple of times, purple sectors and, and a race win in the end. Um, so it's impossible to to predict, but I'm sure we, we had a very strong package and, and I feel very comfortable in the car. Nobody's asking for my opinion, but I also do think there's an element that you did do the overtake already because you were there filling Victor's rear mirrors. And I don't know if he would have made the mistake without that pressure. It was kind of mentioned on the commentary as well. But I'm going to chastise you, Tyler, because the question was, do you think he could have overtaken? Yeah, I mean, so I, I feel that considering that Victor made that mistake anyway, you could argue that with 11 laps left to go, and and um, listening because I, I watched the race back literally like f six hours ago, um, as a result of, of the fact that I, I, I as the fact that I missed it. So, um, listening to the commentary was really interesting on that. As as Fred said, he was setting the pace at that point. He had the quickest laps from I think it was like even like five, six, seven laps in um, to the last few laps of the race. Fred was constantly just lap, 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 and I think that. When you've got a driver in Victor Martins who finished, I think it was third or second in um, the sprint race in Bahrain and then finished second in the sprint race in, in Jeddah, on pole, in the ART, his teammates had a bit of duff, or had a duff weekend. Um, he had the chance to take the championship lead. And there was only really one driver outside of, well, there was two drivers, Behrman 
and Festi. So the, both Premers were the ones that were putting pressure on um, on Martins, and eventually he folded. And I feel that with eleven laps left to go, you'd think that it's not likely that Fred was going to go anywhere unless he, apart from forward. Mm -hmm. So the pressure was going to continue. So if he wasn't going to make a mistake then, there's a high chance around a circuit like Jeddah that you're going to make a mistake somewhere else. So I feel that maybe not an on-track pass, but maybe he just would have made that mistake a couple of laps later sort of thing anyway. So if you're going to make a mistake like that, at any level, you're going to get punished. And especially when you've got a Mercedes Junior who's absolutely gunning it behind him. Um, So... Yeah, a, a very, very due first victory, uh, feature race victory, I should say, in F2 uh, for yeah. Vesti. Yeah, and that feature race victory, as we kind of alluded to, comes with the reunion of Prema. And your team radio after the race, Fred, kind of reminded me of Max Verstappen asking Red Bull, like, can we work together forever? All that sort of stuff. Like, you seemed so happy and the celebrations jumping out the car afterwards when you were going into Park Ferme and greeting yeah, greeting everyone. It's like a close family. Is the relationship with Prema as special as it looks when I watch it on TV? Yeah, absolutely. I, I, like There is there is uh, pretty much no words that, that can describe that relationship and, and team. Like I've been with Prema in 2019, won the championship. My engineer, Pedro Matos, was, was back then, uh, also my engineer. Then my first year in F3, uh, I won three out of nine a uh, feature race as the most winning driver, um, also with Pedro and Prema. And then having the change to AT, uh, obviously um, with the hope to to have the, the F3 championship, didn't happen. We were a bit stronger in F2, I think, generally uh, last year. But then coming back to Prema uh, really just gives me that last bit of confidence and, and help uh, to, to succeed. And uh, and there's a big credit both to Prama and to to my engineer Pedro for for you know they know me really well they know what I need in the car in the team the spirit around me they know everything uh, because they know me so well and and that is a huge advantage when you're fighting at the top level like this. Fred, I need to talk about your old teammate Theo Porcher too because of his weekend. I'm sure you have to give some sort of PR answer. And Tyler, I'm going to push you for something a bit more. Um... Harsh, potentially, but he looked like he might storm away with the championship in Bahrain. Got polled by about three quarters of a second. Got the feature race win. Jeddah, costly crash for the championship. And you'll know Teo quite well after your time together. Do you think it was just a simple mistake? Or do you think it's potentially impatience for the championship, something else? And also, how was Ollie on Saturday night? Because he looked quite devastated on TV. (laughs) Yeah, I think I mean you cannot judge a driver in round two. I mean he showed his potential in round one, and he made mistakes in round two. Um, I think it's it's impossible to judge a driver within two rounds in a fourteen round championship. Um, yeah, you know every every driver will make mistakes this year, and and in F two it's all about consistency. So you know like it's whoever wins the championship at the end of the year is the guy who understood quali to be consistent in quality the most and then scoring every single race possible. Um, so I can't really comment too much on Theo other than saying uh, he makes mistakes like everyone else. And and of course, it was a big move he did. And uh, and sometimes it goes wrong. I was in Bahrain um, and I had a, an incident as well. You know, when you go for it, it, it happens. And uh, and yeah, of course, Oli was was very sad. He was in a good position to to score good good points in the sprint race, and uh, being taken out like that is, is obviously never great. But um, he kept his head high and and fought and was fighting hard as well on the uh, on Sunday. Yeah, I'm um, very curious to see how well Oli does this year. I think the two of you will really fight in the championship. Well, Tyler, it'd be unfair of me, I'd say, to talk about Saudi Arabia and not mention the name Ayumu Iwasa because he got a sprint race win and then he got P4 on Sunday, just off the podium. The only driver in F2 to have scored points every single race so far, four races in. How do you summarise his Saudi weekend? Well, as you mentioned, he is the only driver to, to have scored points in every race so, uh, so far. And in itself, that's an achievement. And Fred said earlier that consistency is key in this championship and considering that he finished the season off last year on such a high uh, he doesn't even feel that by his standards that he's had a great start to the season but to to take a sprint victory 
and then fourth place in the feature race it showed the the mark of someone who who clearly has got pace at two different circuits Bahrain and Jeddah and nothing alike in terms of setup and and dams have been pretty impressive so far both with Claire as well in Bahrain and, and then just Ayumu absolutely trucking it by himself in in Jeddah um it was very impressive to see him fight off uh, Martans um and uh, Derivala for the for uh, victory on on Saturday and then I think he started sixth, I believe, uh, uh, in the feature race on Sunday, and and did a good job of of avoiding um, some of the the guys like Bashaw who uh, had the alternate strategy and and managed to get ahead of them, and and he he was I think the last driver that managed to benefit from Behrman's spin. So he did a really good job all round. Uh, currently sitting in fourth in the uh, sorry third in the championship, two points behind Boshong, and it's a situation where the title is wide open I know it's two rounds in but in terms of there's no runaway leader already it's not like Drogovic is you know last year where he sort of made that early jump and and, and won a couple of feature races early on um so I think Iwasa was some people's pick for the title and I think genuinely it's not a bad shout especially considering how he started the season and um, if you can avoid any pointless visits across the season uh, then maybe it'll be the consistency of someone like Iwasa that, that helps get a title I don't want to say that I want to see a driver crash or not get points, but I'll tell you something, seeing Porsche not score points kind of as a neutral fan quite excited me to think of what this championship could be. So I prefer if he doesn't have to take out other drivers when he does it or drivers like this, but I'm really well, excited for this championship. Yeah, it was, um, I think the thing is with, with Tao is that you get the feeling that he wants to win so bad and mm -hmm. it's difficult to say whether it's a pressure thing or whether it's a personal thing that he applies because um, obviously, when you're in a situation where you're in a, an F1 academy uh, with Sauber, potential door for 2024 for F1, um, Sauber literally have kept him in F2 for one reason, one reason only, to gain maturity and gain, or, you know, to, to uh, increase his maturity and to gain that last little bit that he needs to become uh, an all-round driver. And he did it in Bahrain. He showed that, you know, he's got it. And then he did exactly the opposite and did exactly what he did last year in Jeddah, which was go pointless again. So that's twice now that he's failed to score points in Jeddah. He's not someone that has a lot of luck around that circuit, whether it comes to either mechanical issues or whether it comes to his personal decision-making on track. But yeah, it, it felt desperate from him, in, in it, which was really odd considering that his you know, his position in the championship at the moment or, or going into round two was top. Um so for someone like that to make such a brash move against Behrman, um, you just feel again like drivers who win championships don't make those sort of decisions. Um, not to say that he hasn't got the, the ability to obviously go and win it. He clearly does. But it, it just felt really, um, it, and not a play on words, but it did feel a bit pointless. Tyler, last word from you on F2 and Saudi. Anything you want to add about from Teo's crash or the rookie spinning or maybe there was double podium? Anything else you think was a standout moment from this weekend? Well, it, it's it's weird to have a weekend where... Um, so we do a thing where we, we do the top three drivers of the weekend on Twitter. We do a poll for, for our fans. And um, when it comes to choosing those every week, sometimes it's an easy, you know, an easy choice. Sometimes it's a, a very difficult one. And I felt that this was one of those rounds where it was quite difficult, actually, because you've got a guy who finished second in the sprint race and got pole, his first pole in his second uh, F2 weekend in Victor Martins, um, pretty much copied Porsche's dominance in qualifying from, from Bahrain, almost uh, three quarters of a second ahead of the nearest driver. And then to... I hate using the phrase to bin it, but he did in the in the in the feature race. You know, he span it up and and lost a chance at any point scoring uh, opportunity, and then not have a guy who's got pole and second place in the sprint race as one of your top three drivers because of the fact that he should and, and maybe could have won the feature race. Um, it meant that it opened the door, and I felt that Vesti was was great in terms of the way that he dealt with the pressure. I thought that Iwasa was consistently great throughout the weekend in the sprint race. He, he took his opportunity, won the race, and then got fourth in the feature, as I, as I mentioned. But then Jehan Daruvala, um, somebody who I feel like has sort of gone off the radar a little bit because of um, the fact that I think that Hauger might be the the focal, or not the focal point, but but he might be considered maybe um, 
a, a more of an outside favourite as a, as a championship runner than Derivala is because of the fact that Derivala now has his, his Formula E um, uh, well duties as well with uh, Mahindra. So to see him still performing at a high level, uh, he scored three points out of the four races, so uh, or, or, or three points finishes, I should say, out of the, out of the four races so far, and a double podium, you know, third and third. Um, so you, at some point, you know, you've got to come through people in in that situation. And I know Jeddah's not exactly Monaco, but um, he still had to get the job done, and and he looks really quick at points in that MP. So it'll be interesting to see if he can carry that on throughout the season. Uh, he was very consistent and a lot of people are beginning to to call him Mr. Consistent in, in the championship already. So it, that could be an interesting one to follow. Let's move on to the questions from the audience because we had a load. I think we had a load last time you were on and the podcast has grown and your stature has grown and you've just won a feature race. And I think all that coupled together has created... Well, it created a lot of work for me to try and collate them all. So let's move on to the hashtag AskFS part of the podcast. If this is your first time watching or listening, you can get involved by using the hashtag AskFS on Twitter, joining our Discord and using the podcast questions channel, commenting on our YouTube videos, or keep an eye out on our Instagram posts and stories. Now, this first question is a show and tell round. So bear me one second as I share my screen, dot, dot, dot. Now, this is... Gabriel Bortoletto who has this question. Okay, so my question for the next uh, guest in, in Feeder Series podcast, I will ask, um, can you tell me your routine during a race weekend? Uh, when do you normally arrive on track? What do you do until the end of the weekend? Thank you very much. Well, Gabriel Bortoletto wants the secrets to becoming a <laughs> yeah. F2 feature race winner what, what have you got to say well i think i like to arrive in good time there's no doubt that i'm trying to be as organized as possible and and obviously feel as relaxed as possible something i have discovered in the past few years is definitely the more relaxed i am the better i perform um so some kind of meditation i have like a cold uh, pool uh, which is perfectly temperatured by my dad and my trainer and uh, and i'm in for 10 minutes before each each race so it is a little bit of a secret, but uh, now after the last year, I, I I was the only one doing it last year in F2, but now the the F2 grid is filled with uh, with pools. Um, so it's quite funny. A lot of people is doing it now, which is which is all good. I know why I'm doing it, and I have a great benefit from it. So it's good to see that that other people uh, recognize that as well. Um, that's probably my two two main things: like being relaxed, meditation, and then being completely cool which is another way for me to, to just stay relaxed in the car and you're cool enough for me anyway when you're an f2 feature race winner plenty cool enough but i'm already imagining you like that pierre gasly picture when he's inside one of those trash can rubbish bin things and he looks really freezing cold so hopefully yeah. you've got something a bit more professional looking than that but we've obviously got a lot of questions from the audience and i've split them up and like i said there's a lot i've split them up into denmark racing the past, Mercedes slash Formula One, and then the random collection. And what I'm going to do, because we're not going to get through them all, there just isn't enough time. It would honestly take about two yeah. hours. I'm going to ask you for your choice of, do you want essentially one or two? Because I've split the carrot questions up into two by two. This is for you, Tyler, as well. And if you say one or two, I'll ask the first question or the second question in the way that it's been split up. So for Denmark, do you want one or two? I'll take two. Okay, well, this is from Peak Performance on Twitter. They'll write it in Norwegian, very close to Danish, and see if I could understand it. And it says, Hava et det beste mad, and I really can't pronounce it. So rather than embarrass myself, the question actually is, what is the greatest part of being Danish? Greetings from possibly your biggest Norwegian fan. Wow. Um, the best part about being Danish, oh, that's, um, that's a tricky one. I guess it's, I, I would say we we have a, a like most I don't know this, um, yeah okay the best part about being Danish as a racing driver I will I will ask is or I would say we have a, a great culture for racing uh, mm -hmm. I think karting has has been very good uh, maybe at it goes up and down you know uh, it's not always that all the classes are are full 
but, but there is a great culture uh, for racing in Denmark and I think we have many great professional racing drivers for the very small country uh, we are we're only 5.5 million we have a driver in Formula 1 uh, I'm in Formula 2 and we have plenty of people who are professional all around the world so to have that support from from everyone Danish companies first of all for the sponsorship but um, but in general is is really really cool so I'm proud of being Danish and representing the, the Danish flag. Well, you say that as right there, if you're looking at the podcast, that's a Lego Formula One Mercedes car. So really got everything. That's very nice. <laughs> All covered. I'm um, actually, I'm, yeah, I'm from the town uh, uh, where Lego, where all the factories, where everything started. So it's, that's really cool. Well, I have to say, you have to do even better now because Lego will obviously be wanting to make some sort of Vesti annual merchandise if you make it into F1 to really support their yeah, heroes. Yeah, so, and I love be, Lego, so please do that. Um, Tyler, can you grab the next question? Uh, the second one down, if you could. Yeah, this is from Motorsport Mad via Discord. Um, Sweden, Norway or Finland? I'm guessing this is of the other Nordic countries. Which one do you prefer? What's your favourite to go to? That sort of thing. Yeah, I mean, if I had to go for a holiday, I would probably... It's very close between Norway and Finland. Um, why, why no love for Sweden? Can I just firstly ask? <laughs> <laughs> I Is think it's just about too Swedes? close to Denmark. It's, it's too okay, similar yeah. to Denmark. I, I feel like you know, if, we, if we go to Norway and, and Finland, it's it's a little bit different. It's a little bit more up north. And uh, of course, Sweden is as well. But that that's my pick. I can't really choose between the two because I want to visit and and travel both of them i think that's fine and in the interest of time you really get away with having answers i'm not going to push you on so let's move on to uh jaiku 99 who asked by discord hey fred mega race last weekend do you still buy that danish treat every time you go back home they're referring to what you mentioned in your f3 prima season and you mentioned this on the last podcast yes. as well these chocolate rye things yeah it's too bad because now i i, I live in england i spend all my time oh, pretty much all my time there and it's very rare for me to go back to Denmark actually um, so I don't really have the chance because it's only in Denmark I can get those um, I will though say I, I do still get them when I'm back in Denmark and uh, and I still love them so they're still a part of the the occasional diet let's say that <laughs> I'll have to ask next time you have the podcast again keep it going <laughs> Tyler next question final question in Denmark uh, from Marcus who is by the sounds of it a Danish fan um, how was it commentating on the F1 at Japan? Uh, is it something that you'd like to do after your career? To be honest, I, I enjoyed it. Um, it was a really cool experience. Obviously, I have some behind the scenes uh, stories and things I can I can talk about. Um, so being there with the with the Danish TV was was really cool. Um, it's something I would do uh, as a as a, as a side thing as a side job. If, if I would have the time, uh, but obviously my goal is to be racing in Formula One and not commenting it. So that would, uh, yeah, that would be a second uh, job out in the very far future because my, my eyes are on driving in F1 for sure. We'll be following in the footsteps of Jensen Button, Nico Rosberg turning up to go and talk about it. All these drivers get the championships and still hang around. So that can be you in the future. Right. Same thing for racing. Do you want one or two? Let's go with two this time. Okay, Sorry, so one. Let's go one, one this time. time. We picked two before. We go with one now. You want to switch it up. Okay, so this one is from Dan, who's a Boshung and a Lacey stand, so one of my top people. What racing number would you pick if you could pick one? Um, I would pick... There, there's three numbers, and, and seriously, I, I do not really care a lot. Uh, I, a lot. Some people are in, in love with a number that used in carding or something. Uh, if I have to pick one or two, uh, as I said, I, I'm not. It doesn't mean a lot to me the number, but I would either pick number two or number seven, and that is purely because that's the two numbers I I have used in in the majority of my career. If I could choose the number, um, two and seven I used in in my first so in go karts number two a lot, and then number seven in my first year in Formula Ford when I was only 14 years old, uh, my first year in race cars. There's not a lot of thought to it. It's just uh, the numbers I've used the most, to be honest. Um, that pesky Logan Sargent, your ex-teammate, steals it from you. So you'd have to go there. Kimi Raikkonen, <laughs> I think, had it. Wasn't number seven? He'll be available. Yeah, he's, he's, he was number seven, yeah. This year, yeah, I'm number seven as well in the F2. Perfect. Well, another one from you, Tyler. 
Uh, yeah, this one's from Jorgen96 on Discord. Uh, I know it's sort of similar to the question we asked, so I'll add something to it as well. Uh, do you have some kind of pre-race ritual that you do before jumping in the car on a race day? And also, do you have any um, any things that you do every week or or something after a win that you carry with you? So what's the, what's the phrase I'm looking for, Jim? Um, you know, uh, like a, something that if you uh, succeed and then... A trophy? You have... No, is it like, uh, you know, like, um, oh God, this is really, str- oh, sorry, I really apologize, Fred. The fact <laughs> that I'm so struggling with the word here, um, it's like something that you like live and die by, like a routine that you continue to do. And if you don't do it, you feel like you're going to fail. What's the word yeah. for that? I can't find I don't know. I think of the word. Yeah, I'm not quite sure of the word, but I mean, did, did my, I think one of the things I try to do really well is is being in a good rhythm. I feel terrible if I'm not training, if I'm not trying to get better in, in some way. And sometimes the one of the, the most important things for me is actually to pull back a little and, and maybe take it a little bit more easy because I'm really driven uh, to, to becoming better and, and getting the maximum out of myself. Um, so so go, going to the gym, driving the sim, everything that brings a little bit of performance and a little bit of gain in myself is uh, is probably... It's not just one thing, but it's it's the it's always trying to improve myself. I think that's that's something that that I live by every single week, um, and 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 that's why I wake up motivated in the morning. And just quickly, oh, sorry, I was going to say the word I was looking for for superstitions. Have you got anything like that that you? <laughs> no, <laughs> took a while. Well, I would say I'm superstitious in the way that I'm. And not at all superstitious. So I, okay, yeah. so I would do the opposite. So if my mind would you don't say, like, yeah, if I if I jump in from the right side of the car today, then I'm gonna win. Some drivers say that. Then I would go in in the left. So if you call that superstitious, maybe. But the opposite. Oh, okay. So yeah. You don't like I, to have anything. You don't like any, no, any power over you. You like to have. No, I I believe in hard work and 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 good <laughs> driving. And, well, in, in and, the interest of hard work, Fred, because I know we're just on time, can I push for another 10 minutes or is that going to be a bit too tight for you? Let's do eight. Okay, that's fair. Right, so um, <laughs> let's go for one or two again and I'll skip through some of these questions. So it's number one okay. or two for the past. Two. Number two. Right, so I'm going to go for Checo via Discord. Out of all the race cars you have driven, what livery is your favourite? Well, I will have to say the W13 I drove last year, end of last year, driving, first of all, driving the Formula One car was obviously the biggest and most proud day in my entire life. Um, it beats anything I have done. And and yeah, just an incredible day. Uh, spending my time both with Lewis Hamilton and, and George Russell, uh, sharing the, the garage with both of them during that day was a huge, huge day. Um, driving the Silver Arrow was was massive and, and and i love the the silver mercedes so it has to be that one um, not, not you don't want to yeah, bl- you want to drive a black one this year maybe well i haven't driven it yet so i guess i will have to choose the silver one <laughs> when we ask the question again after you've had a <laughs> outing in fp1 or something tyler take your pick from these questions is this from the the past the, or? this is from the past yes okay so okay here's one from nate the great or at drake the great 26 hi fred how was your relationship with oscar piastri and logan Sargent in your days in f3 are you guys still in contact today and congratulations on your win and hopefully we can see you in f1 with the others yeah so we had a good relationship for sure we were fighting all three uh, quite closely for the championship obviously it didn't turn out exactly as i wanted to um but but it was a very cool year and something probably one of the most competitive years i've ever been in um we were a very strong team the car was very quick and all of us every single weekend was fighting for pole position and and race wins so seeing them in f1 i'm very happy for them of course they are they both deserve to be there uh but also i mean i i need to be there i want to be there and and that's hugely motivating as well to to know that i've raced them i've beat them um in in races and uh, and i really want to be in the formula one as well um and i'm still in contact with both of them when i when i whenever i see them 
a good relationship with those guys. It was a hell of a season, that. Let's go on to in the interest of time. So sorry, everybody, for not getting through them all. But Mercedes slash F1. So again, one or two. Which one, which one do you want to go for? Let's go with two. Let's go with two. So this one's from Vishred by Discord. How's your relationship with Toto and how often do you talk? Well, with Toto, I, I've obviously been a part of the junior program. This is my starting my third year now. And um, especially after driving the Formula One car, there was some, some good contact. It's a, it's a big, big team. And, uh, and he has a lot of people, of course, to, to talk to and, and manage. But talking to Toto is always very uh, inspirational. He's a very good uh, team principal and someone who really understands how to motivate his, his team and drivers. Um, so he's definitely uh, done a lot of good things for me, and and yeah, of course the the test was was probably the biggest thing uh, with my relationship with Mercedes so far. Let's see how that goes this year, Tyler. One from you, please. Uh, can I choose which one? Yeah. Or is it? Are we doing two? Sorry, He's number two okay. for this one. Uh, Number two. Okay, so from Matthias Fret at 98 on Discord, what is your favourite team this season in F1? Caveat, it can't be well, Mercedes before you start. I can't pick Mercedes. You can't pick Mercedes. That's far too much. Is, is, is there a team that you look at historically at all outside of Mercedes that you like because the livery or because the drivers yeah, from right. the young So I'm going to pick Mercedes and then you're going to say I can't pick Mercedes yeah. and then I will have to pick um, I would say either McLaren or um, Aston Martin. I think it's pretty cool to see Aston Martin doing a good job. Um, they've clearly got something right in their car, and uh, and to see them fighting for podiums is is really cool. Uh, of course, they have a Mercedes engine, so that's that always. I, helps. I was going to say that you've gone for the easy out there, but very good PR. <laughs> yeah, like but, but honestly, I, I I really think it's cool and it's good for F1 to have a, a team like Aston Martin fighting uh, for those podiums and and possibly even wins this year if it goes their way. And um, I think that's huge and, and good to see. Uh, yeah. Fair enough. Right, let's whiz through these last ones. You can pretty much one word these, so let's even get through all of them. This is what I dubbed as the random collection. Indigo Lizard via Discord said, what are the best and worst things about living in Oxford? The best things is that uh, I live close to Mercedes. I live close to, to my dream job. Uh, I get to experience a lot of cool things uh, in the simulator uh, and, and different things together with Mercedes. Uh, of course, also living with another racing driver, uh, Oli Caldwell, it's really cool. Uh, we spend a lot of good time together. The the worst part, it can't be that bad because Denmark uh, is as bad because the weather is, is terrible both places. <laughs> it's only really that four-week gap in, in the middle of the summer where the, 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 the weather is nice. But I'm used to it, so it doesn't bother me too much. But yeah. And no access to those chocolate rye things as well. That's pretty bad too. Yeah, that's pretty bad too. True. Uh, the next question was actually from Crispy Crab asking about superstitions, but you've done that. So we're whizzing through this. Um, Tyler, you've got a couple of questions. Yeah, from Ashley on Discord. What's your, f- uh, again, always with the food questions, Jim. What's your favorite type of cheese, Fred? Oh, that's easy. That's like a uh, burrata cheese. Oh, just like that. Uh... That's, that's the right answer, I think. That's the. Yeah, that's. We, I mean, yeah. yeah, can I just say I quickly? Go... We, yeah, we had um Terry Pocher on in I think November or December last year, and and when he asked the question, bear in mind that he's French. He said yeah. that he didn't like cheese, and I just wanted to get as of ex teammate of his, what your verdict on a man, on a Frenchman who doesn't like cheese <laughs> is, is that awful? Well, I didn't even know that, so that's new to me. <laughs> <laughs> you've, you've just fired him up to beat him in the championship even more, Tyler. What sort of man doesn't want cheese? Um, one more from you as well, Tyler, please. Yeah, from uh, Stein on Discord. Uh, what color is your toothbrush? I think it's gray. Yeah, it's definitely gray. I just upgraded uh, a few days ago, so it's uh, it's a gray toothbrush. <laughs> <laughs> is it, uh, is it it Mercedes bring the upgrade package to Melbourne with his new toothbrush? Yes, exactly. We we yeah. Um, Lila, I think it is Layla. If your life had a taste, what would it taste like? Burrata cheese. Wow, there you go. Great. I love that. And then all these going to boil down into, I mean, how many times you want to invest? When does he change his name into Westy after the win? After his victory in Sunday in Jeddah, should we call invest in the category from Isaac Hadger's number two fan? Leah, I love you, Seb. 
Kimmy Martinez. But all of it boils down to me is what's the worst vesty pun that you've heard? I only remember one that always sticks to me, and it's the Vesti Besti. So I, I don't really know yes. others, actually. Maybe I should do my research and, and check out what people are saying. Well, Kimmy <laughs> yeah, Martino but, uh, says you are the best in the category, so that's pretty that's pretty cool. Yeah, I'll take that as well. <laughs> Tyler, take us out if you'd be so kind. No problem. Um, so George Russell, um, Mercedes driver, is well known for having very beautiful eyelashes. Uh, for some reason, uh, AA on Discord wants to know which F2 driver has the most beautiful eyes. I have no I idea how I'm supposed to to answer that. <laughs> Is there anyone that you have a conversation with and you just think to yourself, you get lost in their eyes? Do, no. Is the, the, the do and stare? Or, or you... No, no <laughs> I, really, stare. <laughs> I must be honest, I, I have not done those thoughts. Uh, so I'll, I'll, uh, I'll have to pass on that. Okay. <laughs> And uh, the last one from Cesar Valero at 98. Do you have any favorite foods? Uh, I I mean, I can only describe it in a way that I go often. I prefer Italy for, for the summer holiday. And, and that is uh, partly because of the, the Italian food. And, and it, it, it kind of helps when I'm in an Italian team as well. Um, it does mean I need to train a bit extra hard because it's not the most healthy food. But, uh, but yeah, Italian food is, is definitely on the top of the list. I'm going to end this now and let you go because you've been very generous with your time. But yes or no, pineapple on a pizza? Absolutely every single day. And I know, I know <laughs> oh, Prema fans, they are not happy when I say that. But I got to be honest and, and I like it a lot. So <laughs> that's okay, Dara, we've got... We got a man in F1 who he has uh, chips on his pizza, so that's that's a violation. Don't worry. Who is doing that? That's Perez. Okay, that's crazy. <laughs> well, yeah, I have to say I'm very surprised you'd admit to that when you're driving for Prema, but yeah, now, now it's out there, and I'm I'm fully supportive of it. Um, you need to go yeah. and see uh, Kimi Antonelli, your I guess sort of colleague who has never tried it, and he's promised that he's going to try it this year if I get to meet him. But you force him to do that, Fred, and get yourself out of here. I know you've got to do some training, and best of luck for Melbourne. You've been very generous with your time, so I'm going to let you go. And thank you so much for answering all the questions, and congratulations once again on that feature race win. Thank you very much, guys. It was uh, nice talking to you again. That is all the time we have this week. Thank you, everybody, for watching and listening. If you'd like to have your question asked on a future episode, use the hashtag AskFS on Twitter. Drop any questions below if you're watching on YouTube. You can respond to our Instagram stories or posts or let us know what questions you have on your mind on our Discord. Look for the podcast questions channel. And if you are watching on YouTube, dropping a like on the video, leaving a comment and subscribing all really helps us out. And if you are listening, leaving a review on the podcast platform you're listening on is greatly appreciated. Finally, check out feederseries.net for more feeder series insights, including the words of Tyler Foster. And follow feeder underscore series, FS Americas and feeder series now on Twitter. You can find the links to all of those, plus the Twitter accounts for myself and everyone else on the podcast in the YouTube description or the podcast show notes. Until next time, we have been the Feeder Series Podcast. Goodbye.